Welcome to Creating Calm, Parenting with Mind, Body, and Spirit. I'm Corinne Casey, your co-host. I'm an integral life coach, a mother of two, and a lifelong student of the Edgar Casey reading. And I'm, fr- I'm here with my friend and co-host, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Corinne. It's Dr. Arlene Diamko. I'm an integrative physician, a pediatrician, and a cranial osteopath, and a mom of four. And today we thought we would talk about something that every family is interested in. It is food, but specifically understanding Casey food combinations. So we're going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts about that and and why. So before we get to that, Corinne is going to walk us through our opening meditation. Yes. Thanks so much, Arlene. So as we get started, as we usually do, let's take a moment just to come into our bodies, find ourselves. You can close your eyes if that's appropriate or just let your attention come inward. Feel your feet on the ground. And let's take three deep breaths together. All right, thank you. So we're going to begin this episode on food combinations with an excerpt from the Edgar Casey readings, as we always do. And this excerpt comes from reading 1968-3. And it says, thus we would administer those activities which would bring a normal reaction through these portions, stimulating them to an activity from the body itself, rather than the body becoming dependent upon supplies that are robbing portions of the system to produce activity in other portions, or the system receiving elements or chemical reactions being supplied without the arousing activities of the system itself for a more normal condition. So this is kind of a full a full a full statement here, but there's a couple of phrases in there around the normal conditions and normal reactions and not wanting to rob energy from other systems of the body in order to create uh, an imbalance that I think we will help frame us for our conversation today, Arlene. wouldn't wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I mean, what I get from this reading is that, Well, we know that we feel best when our energies are balanced and food is supposed to be nourishing for us. So if we eat certain food combinations that actually take us more energy to digest, so not digesting efficiently, not assimilating nutrients efficiently, then that's the robbing part that the, the statement is talking about where, um, our energies are being robbed because we're, we're not using our energy efficiently. And then we will have to rely on other things to replace those energies or to help us rebalance. And so um, mm-hmm. the act of eating and getting our nourishment actually starts to be more work. And so we thought we would go through the food combinations to help us with the efficiency of our digestion and get the most out of what we're eating. And so um, that's that's what this statement means to me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. That's that's my sense as well. And food combinations is such an interesting element of the Edgar Casey readings because it's different than diet, right? It's like just eat this mm-hmm. or eliminate this, but it's talking more about the combination of things. And I think in conversations that I have with my family around what to eat or why we're eating what we're eating, this is such an interesting, a little bit mysterious and very unique part of the readings that I think for families, especially it's so interesting to explore and understand and be able to uh, talk about together. So I'm really excited to dive in and thank you so much for walking us through this, Arlene. Oh, this is great. I, I think it's really interesting too. And and it's not mentioned in many places. Um, so that's what makes it kind of unique to the, the Casey readings. So um, yeah. would you like to go through the list for us? Sure. 
So these are all pretty familiar for me. I was laughing looking at them from growing up in my household of what our different meals <laughs> would look like. But some of the food combinations that we want to avoid are two or more starchy foods in the same meal. So this is a huge one, I think, especially for Americans in our culture. We're so used to having pasta and bread and potatoes and sort of bringing all of having more than one of those in a meal often. And that and the readings are pretty clear, clear in the terms of this is consistently recommended again and again across many different readings to not combine uh, more than one starchy food in a meal. And also to not have uh, cereals or grains with citrus or juices. So not having orange juice if you're also going to be having a hot or cold cereal in the morning, or those are the that's the main meal that I'm aware of that. But uh, for other meals as well, just looking at the grains and not having citrus with that. And then the same is true for milk and citrus that we don't want to be drinking orange juice and having milk in our cereal at the same thing. I think about this often in smoothies that I'm making, um, which is like mm -hmm. a great snack for our families that I'll do often. And if I'm using, if one of the uh, liquids that I'm putting in there is orange juice, then I'm not going to want to add plain yogurt to that or uh, something like that. I'll want to stay away. And then likewise, if I do put yogurt in or um, a milk of some sort, then I'm not going to be adding any citrusy fruits to that smoothie as well. So that's one way that I think of it. Um, and sugary foods and starchy foods, not combining high sugar with high starch. So that's a lot of the pastries that we love to have for breakfast. That's not recommended. Um, same is true for large quantities of starchy foods with meat, fowl, fish, or cheese. So separating out the meats from the starches, the cheese from the starches. And then this is a hard one for many, many people. I know I was just at an ARE retreat where we were really working with not putting dairy in coffee. That's awfully an, an easy first one to try and work with, that there's a combination that we'll get into later of the why behind why we want to do this, but really clear not to add milk or cream, any sort of dairy to coffee. Um, and eating raw apples alone. Apple is a standalone fruit. Not That's works with smoothies too, not putting apple juice in as a base if you're going to be layering or adding a lot of other fruits to it as well. And that as a snack, just having it, not putting it in your fruit salads or anything like that. And the same can be true for bananas, it's a standalone fruit to eat. And then not eating melons with other foods. So those are a bunch of the combinations to avoid. And before we move into what we the combinations that we want to bring together, I'd love to spend a little bit of time talking about like why we want to avoid these things. Like, yes, these seem like really clear, easy rules, but why do we want to do that? What is happening in our digestive system, Arlene? When when you look at all of these don'ts for food combinations, what are you seeing as a physician? Well, I when I look at these food combinations, I can sum it up more easily into well, don't eat more than one starchy thing together, and yeah. um, and then and don't eat um, milk with anything that might curdle it. So anything acidic, um, because that mm -hmm. will help slow down the digestion. And then when we get these carb, high carb um, foods together. Um, yeah. even like we're talking about like those, those really sweet fruits, the bananas, the melons, or a more starchy apple that has a sweetness. When we combine mm -hmm. these with other foods, you have too many carbohydrates, then what's going to happen is that the food is going to ferment in your belly. And there is a mm -hmm. line from one of the Casey readings, it's, um, 306-3 and it says acids make for a fermentation as may be seen from yeast, fruit fermentation, or the like. So 
Mm-hmm. When we slow down that digestion, then we also alter the gut flora. So the less friendly bacteria, the, the ones that are supposed to be kept in smaller amounts, start to flourish. They feed off those alcohol and sugars that are fermenting, um, and it makes the mm. digestion more sluggish. So you could get the bloating gas from that fermentation. You could get constipation, or if um, depending on people, if they're just really reacting in a different way. Um, can get some more in inflammation and actually like create some diarrhea. So mm-hmm. um, we, in order to have efficiency of digestion, to get like the most out of the foods we're eating, we want to be able to eat in a way that our bodies are able to digest easily. So, mm-hmm. I mean, signs are if you're not digesting well, or if your food's fermenting, again, what I mentioned, the bloating, the gas, constipation, but also I would consider if you're getting tired after a meal, that could be a sign that you're not digesting food efficiently. So that first uh, excerpt that we read about um, things robbing energies from the body. So that's what I think Mm -hmm. of. Like if you're feeling tired after a meal, even though food's supposed to nourish us and food's supposed to give us energy, but then we're finding that our energy is getting diverted and making us tired in the process of digesting our food, that's the robbing quality. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Mm -hmm. and we can see this, like if we have too many refined carbohydrates or processed foods, it can cause this sugar spike and crash. So um, Mm -hmm. maybe you have a little bit of energy, but then like within the hour after eating, you feel like, you know, I need to take a nap. And I used to feel like that so much. Um, I remember like growing up, if we had like really heavy meals or just um, so many, like so much bread. And uh, I thought that was how you were supposed to feel after you ate, but it's not true. And um, it's not the healthiest response to a meal. So Mm -hmm. there can be other reasons for feeling tired after a meal for sure. But if you want to help balance those um, sugar levels in your body and your insulin levels in your body, you could consider going for a walk before or after a meal to help regulate your sugar and insulin levels. And this is really amazing because studies have shown that even 30 minute brisk mo- walk within 30 minutes after a meal can lower your blood sugar 50 times more than if you were just to crash on the couch. So, um, That's a really simple way. So say you didn't have the perfect meal combination, it would be something you could do to help yourself. Um, And and even if you are eating really well, it's a way to to stay steady with your food and your blood sugar and insulin levels. And um, and the studies have shown that this effect can last up to 24 to 48 hours. So in other suggestions for the KC readings of just I'm going for a walk every every day, if that effect lasts for the whole 24 hours, then if we walked most days, then uh, we could really help our digestion, help massage all those internal organs and, and balance our response to food. So uh, anyway, it's, it's so interesting. And I've read through these food combinations so many times that it's, um, I mean, I didn't grow up with it like you, Corinne, but I feel like it's yeah. more ingrained in me now. And so it's like, uh, I don't have to right. think about it as much. It's just more instinctive. Oh, yeah, that's not the best combination. I mean, there might be times where you right. override that. <laughs> it's free will, right? Mm-hmm. So you might decide, <laughs> okay, well, for this time, it's really worth it. <laughs> totally. We all have those times. Absolutely. So, yeah. And it's, I think coming at it from this, with this perspective of let's talk about the food combinations is, it's a variation of conversations that we've had before around these more seminal, bigger ideas in the Edgar Casey readings that are so essential to health around the acid alkaline balance and the circulation, assimilation, relaxation, elimination focus of the general keeping of the flow, keeping things in balance. And this is kind of just a more tangible way of applying these bigger ideas for how to be healthy and well, 
and well and really making it applicable in terms of what does that mean in terms of what foods I want to be trying to eat together and which combinations I want to be avoiding as I'm packing lunch, preparing meal plans, like thinking about what I'm going to be buying at the grocery store for my family and what Arlene's saying around like the more we kind of look at these combinations and also start to come into a deeper sense of like why it actually matter, you know, why we're doing it, which I mean, now that you say all this, Arlene, around just like, well, there's fermentation that happens in your stomach if, when you don't, when you're not putting foods in there that are digested really easily. And when it's not digested easily, it takes more energy. And then that's pulling energy from other places that could, other systems in the body that could be using it to help it, our bodies work smoothly. And when we're sort of chronically in that pattern of needing to use a lot of energy and fermentation happening in the belly when we're in the gut flora getting off, and then we start to feel the consequences of that in other ways through other illnesses or impacts. And that that has, you know, that's kind of a big deal. And that one really tangible, applicable way to kind of come at that is through paying attention to these specific combinations as of food, not as much like what food to eat specifically, but more broadly, like how can we combine them in a way that it just makes it a little bit easier. And, uh, and as we start to work with it, it does get easier because it is in our minds and we naturally are drawn. That's what I notice about myself now. Like the thought of drinking orange juice and eating yogurt together is like, like if I have like a visceral reaction to the idea of eating those things together, the same cannot be said for like a wonderful muffin or something that I want to eat in the morning, but just working with it that way, you know, it really does mm -hmm. start to uh, get easier. And also uh, our bodies will feel better mm -hmm. and will have more energy. Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's really, and that's really exciting, especially I know in my world, I feel like so many moms and parents are working with digestive issues with their children, whether it's constipation or diarrhea or, or, and like eczema and, and like, these are sort of chronic mm -hmm. Things that are happening in our society right now and with our children are feeling that, and this is such a gentle way, not the only way or anything, but a gentle way to really begin to engage with it. So let's yeah, keep and, going. Let's keep, you know, yeah. Well, well, I was, th I was thinking about like, if you haven't com used these food combinations yet, or you haven't been aware of it, um, that's okay. And in the beginning, like, because so much of the standard American diet is actually um, eating all of these food combinations that uh, Casey says to avoid. Um, and so right. it will create some sort of like numbness in the system. So you may not have the same mind body awareness, but as you start to in incorporate these suggestions from the Casey readings, then you can have start to have more clarity. And as you have more clarity, then I mm -hmm. just tell people like, well, build those data points in your head, like just observe neutrally. How do you feel after you eat? How do you feel the hour after? Yeah. How do you feel through the day? So then you can start to, to kind of teach your mind like, oh, okay, this is what I feel. This I feel good when I do it this way. I don't feel as good when I do it this way. And then, but to have it, mm -hmm. to notice it in that kind of loving, neutral way so that if you don't feel good, then you can just tell yourself, like, it's like self-coaching. It's like, oh, okay, well then maybe yeah. let me tweak this some, let me make some changes. And if you do feel good, then it's like, okay, then I feel like that's a good trajectory. I'll keep going in, the, in that direction. But to always, to, to have those data points in, in your mind, and then, then you can like self-coach yourself and not feel bad about it, but it's just that's just information and feedback. Yeah. So as yeah. you gather that feedback, then you can make adjustments to what your what feels good for your body. Yeah, absolutely. That's so important to really know that we're all different and we our bodies feel different in different ways. And that's just as valid, if not more valid than whatever sort of rules we may think we need to follow uh, related to this sort of thing. And the same thing is, I mean, what you were saying, Arlene, about like, this is in many ways, very counter to how we, how easy it is 
this is not how we eat in our culture. You go out to eat, you go over to people's houses, you're even looking in your own refrigerator and it's it's hard to do and to be gentle with yourself. I mean, so often in the readings when you're working with something, it's you're trying it for three or four weeks and then you're taking a week off or four days on, three days off, or there, there's a lot of... Uh, integrity and truth to not needing to do it all one way all the time and being gentle, like that it actually being good mm -hmm. to take a break. So when there are mm -hmm. days where you're not doing the food combinations, I know it happens to me where I'm on the run and I'm snacking more, you know, not having a lunch meal and just having some snacks and feeling like, oh, this doesn't, I can tell that this isn't as good for my body and I still didn't make a different choice. And that's okay. Can kind of come back to it fresh another day. And it creates for me more motivation to try again and just really being gentle with yourself in that process and also gentle with our kids, right? Because there's those sugars and starches taste really good. And they're the first thing we grab a lot of times. <laughs> well, the, we wanted to balance this also with food combinations that work well together. And yes. you're going to start to notice a pattern here. So yeah. um, greens with a sprinkle of gelatin to help you with the simulation of nutrients greens with citrus, mm -hmm. <laughs> greens with grains, <laughs> greens with meat, fowl, fish, or cheese. <laughs> so it's like, okay, everything combines well with greens, just not all those things all together all the time. So uh, you can see the trend. And then a, a common um, recommendation in that alkaline diet is one below ground veggie with three above ground veggies, especially the leafy ones. <laughs> so again, it's like those leafy greens with below ground veggie, um, that will be a starchy veggie. So, um, uh, some uh, food combination that Casey suggested is celery, romaine, or cabbage, and carrots, and slice thin to help it digest better. Then you could sprinkle your gelatin on that, and um, and that would be like a, a very healthy um, food combination for lunch. Of course, you can get like whatever protein you need as well, and. Um, and then he also suggested like one meal, one meal or mainly entirely of raw foods often at lunch. So that kind of slaw that I described with the celery, the romaine or the cabbage and the carrots. Um, and, and I love to always include just a little something sweet because just in case you're having a craving that you can make it a healthier one. So if you need something sweet, and then Casey said that you could have a little bit of honey, preferably with the honeycomb. So a small piece of honeycomb, and then you could put that on um, some whole grain bread or toast, um, or you can do what I do, just eat it straight. So the honeycomb has so many nutritious elements in it and B vitamins and um, that waxiness, I feel like it just helps to slow the digestion a little bit, but not so much. So you're producing um, fermentation because you did warn, don't take too much. Um, so really it's a balance. It's not making um, one food necessarily bad per se, um, but the balance of the foods. And so when we are digesting well, then we have efficient digestion and the suppilation of nutrients. We can avoid that gassiness, bloated feeling, um, tiredness after a meal, and we can maintain healthy gut flora, which is so important for our immune system, our mind, calm, clarity, focus, um, our, uh, everything from um, autoimmune conditions to rashes. So, so much we could talk about with that healthy mm -hmm. gut flora. Uh, these healthy food combinations support that healthy gut flora. So then it's, um, they include a lot of prebiotics, prebiotics meaning for life, pre, um, that supports life. So then your more healthy gut flora um, can go up and keep the less friendly gut flora more in check so that they don't like run amok and take things over. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can see the trends there, yeah. greens. Yeah. with anything. Lots of <laughs> avoid that. Yep. Avoid foods that curdle together and mm -hmm. um, avoid mm -hmm. too many carbs in one meal because they, they will, and sweets in one meal because they'll create fermentation. Yeah. 
Yeah. So looking for simple, easy ways to get greens in your diet. I know in my family, the smoothie has become a great way to do that. And we, you can make them really sweet, you know, with fruit and frozen fruit and then adding some greens works well. I also, for the greens at dinner, whether it's farro or brown rice or quinoa, um, will chop up greens, um, not too much, or I start to hit some resistance, but chop up greens not and fold them in to the grain so that there's just like a little bit of green that's mixed in, like whatever our stir fry or uh, Mexican food has just like a little bit of added green to it. And then for lunchtime snacks of just like having carrot sticks and or celery sticks and you can kind of put them in jars and water like so that you can just grab them in the morning to add to lunch boxes and don't have to do a whole bunch of chopping if you're if you've got a lot going on and it's busy of just kind of really making it easy to make um, vegetables and fruits accessible for the kids and for meals so that I know we're all so busy and that I know for me checking in with that why behind it of like, why are we doing this um, of really like that fermentation process, avoiding that fermentation process in the belly and allowing for it to be digestion to be easy. And um, and then listening to the children too, I think is just like what they like, what feels good in their body and what causes gas or indigestion that they don't like and honoring that too, right, Arlene? Like that's an mm-hmm. impo- what you were saying earlier with our applies to our children as well as in terms of not being, you know, only enforcers, like, you know, on this, but like being willing to be flexible around what you know, yeah, it's okay mm-hmm. not to do it that way. And we don't have, it doesn't have to be this hard and fast rule all the time. I know one of my children in particular, like loves potatoes, loves the starchy vegetables. So like we, I will give her that more and, and leave the skins on that said again and again in the reading, leave to leave the, uh, skin on a potato, but still we're eating more potatoes than I think I would otherwise, but she loves it. And, and she doesn't, you know, there's not that many vegetables that she loves. So once or twice a week, we'll have potatoes and it's okay. I I feel like it helps them learn to have that mind body connection when you don't, you try not to control it or interfere with it too much. Of course, we're always totally. wanting to survive, support, you know, provide nourishing meals, um, but but they get to learn in their own life as well, and yeah. um, and they'll feel it because they tend to be able to handle a lot more, just depending on your constitution, your sensitivity. Um, but yeah. kids in general, and compared to adults, tend to be able to handle a lot more. Um, But at some point, they can get thrown, they can throw themselves off of balance, and they will notice. And so um, supporting them through that and helping them make those kinds of connections as well in a not non judgmental way, because it's like, you know, see, I told you, so it's probably doesn't help as well. Um, And just asking them like, well, what, what do you think you could eat to help support yourself? Or what do you think would help you feel better? And then they can, um, even, yeah. Um, yeah, my kids are so different, but they can come up with, with something. Totally. So, and yeah, they like you when they're, when they're listening, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. They love, and they do know what they like and what they don't like. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a certain, like, what fruit would you like for breakfast? I feel like I'll say that often, like, what will come easy to you? What, what will you eat for lunch mm-hmm. of these different options and including and folding that in? And and what you're saying too, I think is so valid around seed planting. Like, <laughs> and what I mean by that is just like talking to them about why you're trying to do what you're doing, but not having it be, it has to be this way and not another way. And sort of trusting that as they grow and mature mm-hmm. and come in and, feel their bodies more when they're not maybe as resilient or adaptable as when they're little, then that information is there at a cellular deep level of like, oh, maybe I want to try this or, you know, move more toward this as they get older and that that's, that's enough. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Yes. 
trusting that yeah. they will get it in their time, even though it can be hard to not feel yeah. upset with their, <laughs> their diet sometimes, but, totally. but having that greater trust totally. that they will yeah. get it in the time that's, that works for them, divine timing and um, that they're supported no yeah. matter what. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way to end. I know it's such a good reminder for me because I can get intense around <laughs> some of my biggest fights with my son around food. It's such a great thing to remember. Uh, so uh, hopefully this has been helpful kind of digging into these food combinations that are so found so frequently in the Edgar Casey readings and why we want to do that and how to sort of engage with it uh, and make it applicable in family life. So thanks so much, Arlene, for spending some time in this space with me. It's been so enlightening and I always enjoy it so much. Thank you, Corinne. That's a great reminder for all of us. And now I'm going to start looking at some recipes that I want to put together with my kids. So thanks everyone for joining us. <laughs>